we have a different kind of SEMs. Uh, uh, generally, when we are talking about SEMs, we will uh, classify it, it as two. One is tungsten filament, uh, that is thermionic emission SEM. Another one is field emission scanning electron microscope. If you want better quality, better quality images, better resolution, you should go for uh, field emission scanning electron microscope. If, if, if it is okay with the lower resolution, uh, the lower resolution in the sense lower magnification and all, it is okay with uh, so metallic sample and all, it is okay with our uh, tungsten based thermionic emission SEM. But whenever you need high clarity, high resolution images, uh, you should go uh, with, with the uh, field emission scanning electron microscope. Uh, the difference between these two are uh, exactly like the uh, production of electrons uh, in tungsten, uh, ordinary tungsten, uh, uh, tungsten filament is using in thermionic emission, but uh, in FE sums, uh, they'll be using some short key field emission uh, uh, gun uh, for better resolution, better production of electrons as well as better resolution of images. So when you are going further, we will talk about a little bit of scanning electron microscope. So how uh, a electro a, a image is forming? That's what uh, we wanted. The physics behind the uh, electron, how uh, an electro uh, sorry, how an image is forming from electron microscope. This is very simple. Uh, when you are bombarding with the incident electron, as I already mentioned, uh, when you are bombarding uh, electrons, electrons in high vacuum, it is just acting like a light. That's why uh, we are uh, studying about electron microscope and etc. So incident electron will be uh, having uh, a very good, uh, very good narrow, uh, narrow probe. Uh, so we, it will be falling on our bulk sample. We will get lot of secondary electrons, lot of secondary electrons uh, as well as secondary, uh, the secondary outputs like secondary electron, auger electrons, backscatter electrons, light, continuous X-ray, characteristic X-ray, etc. Some of the electrons will transmit also if your sample is really thin. Uh, so when you are going with uh, TEM, transmission electron microscope, that transmitters, transmitted electrons will be, uh, will, be, will be looking for that transmission electrons. But in second scanning electron microscope, we will be basically looking for the secondary electron as well as backscatter electron. For basic imaging, we will be using secondary electron for specialized imaging, specialized imaging in the sense. So uh, I hope you will be, you are well, well known with the nanocomposite and all. Uh, many of, may, may, in this FDP itself, uh, many of the faculties have already talked about nanocomposite and all. So if you have some nanocomposite uh, with uh, elemental composition, different elemental composition, if you want to see it in microscope, uh, uh, the Elemental contrast difference, if you want to see, then you you should go with the uh, backscatter electron. And we have uh, characteristic X-ray analysis. Characteristic X-ray analysis means if you want to see, uh, see what all elements present in your sample and where it is exactly present, those kind of analysis can be done by this characteristic X-ray. So for all all outputs will be visualized with the different different kind of detectors. That's what the importance of this. Uh, electron analysis, electron microscopic analysis. So uh, these semi images, uh, these outputs will be detected by different detectors and converting into image. This is the basic principle of scanning electron microscope. So uh, configuration and all, I'm not uh, going with these uh, these kind of things. Still, uh, we we should understand how uh, the electrons are forming. We have a cathode anode system. Electron gun, uh, electron gun, the entire portion is known as electron gun. Uh, we have a column kind of thing, and we have condenser lenses, deflection coils, objective lenses, etc. And which all, all these all com uh, uh, components are streamlining the X-rays coming from the filament. This filament is very important. Filament, how the electrons are producing. One is thermionic emission just by introducing temperature. And another, another aspect is a field emission. We, have, we are applying an extra field for extracting the electrons. So with this, with this all, the electrons are coming and bombarding with your sample. And secondary electrons, other, electro, other, other outputs are also coming. And this secondary electron detector is detecting the electrons and which is amplified by some amplifiers and image is signals and CRT will be and camera will be there. And it is, we are getting like a, a 2D image. 2D, it's very interesting to understand the action of these electrons on sample. 
So the important point is that uh, the what all uh, what all the type of electron guns. I already explained like uh, thermionic emission. Uh, for thermionic emission, basic thermionic emission we are using with the uh, tungsten filament. Uh, and we, we have a uh, tungsten filament. Uh, with with the tungsten filament, we will go for thermionic emission. But for high, uh, uh, as I already mentioned, for high resolution, uh, so for high resolution images, uh, the tungsten filament is not enough. In the thermionic emission filament is not enough. You should go for some uh, field emission, field emission filament like short key field emission filament uh, so tungsten itself we can use it as a short key field emission but with some other uh, other uh, other uh, other things we have to attach with that that's why we will be uh, we will be going with uh, for FESEM we will be going with cold uh, uh, short key emission filament but the problem is uh, the the cost of this uh, instrument is very high and uh, before two, 12 years we bought this uh, bought our instrument with uh, uh, 1.9 crores, uh, and the the problem is maintenance is also a very hectic job. Uh, the cold FP filament uh, only withstand up to 6,000 hours. Withstand in the sense we can use if you are maintaining properly, we can use further. But still, uh, 6,000 years, uh, 6,000 hours uh, is the uh, uh, so, so whenever we are buying it, uh, they will the service engineers will tell 6,000 hours is the hours is the life. Uh, you can uh, use further. We are using for three years, four years. We are educational institutes because uh, that's why we can't able to buy uh, after six thousand uh, hours. Uh, replacing this gun is very hectic. So it will cost. It will all, all, uh, always cost. Now uh, they are uh, they are giving a quotation of fifteen lakhs for changing our gun or filament. Uh, this is, uh, it is very difficult to change uh, uh, within this uh, this smart. Small, small span. Still, uh, we will get some good images, uh, even though we are using three years or four years. But the quality of image will reduce. What will happen for this gun? This will break. Uh, this will break, and uh, we'll uh, we'll see the uh, we can see the separation. It, this will break, and it will uh, lose the uh, it will lose the uh, uh, efficiency for uh, making uh, uh, giving electrons. Uh, that's why uh, it's a, a electron gun is very important. You can see the tungsten filament and FE tip, field emission tip with a, a small needle like thing. Uh, and uh, we have FE tip here, and uh, this is uh, tungsten filament only. This is uh, using for thermionic emission. Uh, here it is using for field emission. Uh, so I will move to uh, next slide. Uh, resolution with various type of SEMs. So you can see the resolution uh, graph. Uh, thermal, thermal, as I pointed out earlier, thermal SEM will give you uh, the less resolution images and in lens FESEM uh, and out lens FESEM, those kind of things are there. I already pointed out field emission scanning electron will give you better resolution uh, with acceleration voltage. And how a image is forming, that's what, uh, as I told uh, earlier, uh, we already discussed that. Uh, so the, the, the electron is uh, electron is bombarding on the sample and we will be having secondary electron, bacterial electron, auger electrons, x-rays, etc. And these images, these uh, secondary outputs are taken by some detectors. So uh, we know that uh, secondary electrons are forming by uh, inelastic co interaction, inelastic collision. So, uh, and uh, the bacterial electrons are just like rubber balls. When you uh, you uh, throw a rubber ball on a floor, it will bounce back. It is exactly like that. The electrons will be falling on the sample, and it is uh, just bouncing back. And uh, that can be uh, detected by our backscatter electron, and we will get beautiful images, contrast imaging for nanocomposite samples. So basically, for aerospace application and all, uh, we will be using polymer nanocomposite. Uh, so, so microscopic technique is very important for material characterization. And but for ordinary imaging, secondary electron imaging is uh, perfectly fine. Even uh, in secondary electron, also we can able to analyze uh, the uh, fiber reinforced composite and all. And this is our detectors. You can able to see this bigger one, a bigger one, bigger one is uh, EDS detector. That means the elemental combustion, X-ray detector. Elemental combustion analysis can be done with this. So what all elements present in your sample can be analyzed with this EDS detector. And these are secondary electron detector and backscatter electron detector. These are the detectors of, of our, our own SEM. And uh, next point is, uh, this is a very basic thing, uh, but 
uh, it is very important to uh, understand a uh, a basic uh, postgraduate student or uh, even faculties and uh, all research scholars who, who are working with materials how a sample can be prepared for uh, SEM images. So uh, I'm um, I'm talking about uh, the main point have to be understand is that uh, the sample samples which are uh, which which can be. Uh, uh, which can be uh, evaluated by analyzed with the uh, scanning electron microscope should be completely dried. The sample should be completely dried. Otherwise, it will disturb the vacuum and it will ruin your imaging. And another point is the sample should be uh, conductive. That is the main point. So if your sample is not conductive, still we are doing biological samples, polymers, polymer nanocomposites, etc. So for those non-conductive samples we are going with a sputtering. Sputtering means we will be sputtering gold over the sample, very small thickness gold over the sample, and we will be analyzing the uh, sample with our microscope. So you can able to see how we will be doing this. You can able to see this. Uh, this is a carbon tape. This is a double side tape. And this is a gold. Uh, this is also a conductive carbon tape. This is also costly around for one roll. Uh, around uh, fourteen thousand will be cost. And uh, we'll be pasting it on uh, these type of stubs. This is known as uh, stubs, uh, where we'll be placing the sample. We'll be pasting it, the, uh, pasting this black tape over the, uh, the the stubs, and we'll be putting our sample over this carbon tape. And uh, it it all depends upon your instrument. Our for our instrument, the stub is uh, something like this. For a different company instrument, the stub will be uh, different a different model. But for, for us, uh, the advantage is that uh, multiple samples can be unlaced in a stub. So you can put uh, different samples and you can number it one, two, three, four, five, et cetera. And you can see it, uh, the numbering in microscope and you can unlace one by one. That is the advantage of once it is inserted, you can uh, you can put uh, around 12 samples, 10 samples or 12 samples together, small, if it is small. And that is also important. Uh, so if you are going with some powders, you can put uh, the powder very small, very pinch, very small amount of powder over the stub and we'll be unlacing directly. That, that is the advantage of uh, that. Uh, that is the advantage of our ACM and other other ACMs also it's possible. Um, but uh, still, if you have very small, uh, very uh, one or two sample, you can use this stub. Otherwise, you can use the bigger one. Uh, so uh, it all depends upon how many samples are there uh, with you. And if it is conductive, you can directly put into our machine. Very easy. You can directly put into this stub holder. This is known as stub holder, and you can directly go for the analysis. But if it is non-conductive sample like polymers and uh, nanocomposites and uh, uh, the biological samples, etc., we'll use this sputtering unit. This is known as gold sputtering unit. Uh, this is also from Hitachi. Uh, here we'll be doing uh, the gold sputtering, and here you can do go for carbon sputtering. But uh, we'll be basically uh, going with gold sputtering. Very small amount, uh, uh, small amount gold will be uh, putting over this your sample. It won't disturb your sample. It won't affect your sample morphology. It, it is only a one to two nanometer thick coating only. And we'll be putting over the uh, inside the this chamber, and we'll be giving some uh, vacuum, and we'll do the sputtering. Sputtering means the gold will physically depositing over your sample, and we'll put it on the. Uh, the sub holder and we'll directly go for analysis. This is only about uh, uh, sample preparation. But if you are coming with liquid samples for nanoparticle and all, we'll be dispersing. So all are uh, maybe some of you are working with polymer nanocomposite. Uh, the main problem with the nanoparticle is that it will agglomerate very easily. So as such powder, uh, so it's better to do with the dispersion. Uh, while doing the microscopy. So SH powder, when you are putting over this tub, uh, it will agglomerate, uh, agglomerate, and we won't get very good images for particles. And the, the main idea behind this is, uh, so if you want to go for a dispersion more, you, you, you can take small, very small amount of your powder, you can put it on some easily evaporating solvents like acetone, ethanol, etc. And you can disperse it properly by some sonication method, uh, water bath sonication or something like that, and put a drop over this uh, carbon tape and dry it overnight. 
you can try it overnight otherwise if it is easily evaporating samples like acetone or ethanol you can even dry it in a, in a, in a hour or two hours and you can go go for the analysis then you will get very beautiful images uh, like without any agglomeration that is a uh, that is a major point in doing uh, dispersion samples as well as powder samples okay and after sample preparation, sample preparation, we'll be coming here and we'll be opening this chamber. This is known as uh, exchange chamber. For our instrument, we have exchange chamber. For other instrument, we'll be directly, directly keeping our sample inside this sample chamber. But for our instrument, we have a exchange chamber. We'll be opening this uh, chamber and we'll be putting that sample holder into it. And we'll be opening the inside chamber. We are pushing the sample inside and uh, and uh, and we are closing this chamber and we'll be starting the analysis so uh, so before going to for an analysis you should understand which mode you require that is very important it will uh, decided by you and with a discussion with the technical technical staff who is doing this analysis so mode of operation is different as i pointed out we have different modes secondary electron mode is there for basic analysis secondary electron mode is more than enough and for, for if you are going with some composites, uh, the elemental contrast, uh, uh, elemental contrast will be. Uh, if you need some elemental contrast on your image, you should go for backscatter electron imaging. But first of all, you should decide which imaging is uh, required for you. So uh, when you are going for backscatter imaging, you should uh, you should you, you should have you should understand that. Your sample should have uh, 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 should uh, should be the sample should be having the elemental contrast uh, the elemental contrast should be there. Then only you will get BSE imaging. And if you want to know the basic elemental uh, presence of element, what all elements present in your sample, you should go for EDS energy dispersion spectroscopic analysis. That means X-ray X-ray analysis. I already shown the X-ray uh, X-ray detector. Uh, uh, that blue uh, blue detector and if you want to do that you can go with that x-ray uh, detect x-ray detector and do the analysis of elemental composition then you uh, we, sh we will be uh, we'll be uh, 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 we'll be understanding about acceleration voltage acceleration voltage means how much acceleration voltage is required for getting your image so that will be decided by the technical uh, technical staff uh, he, with his experience he can able to dis, uh, decide that acceleration voltage uh, which is required for your sample the thing is uh, thing is uh, acceleration voltage means it all depends upon your sample if you are coming with metallic sample we can even go up to uh, 30 volt the uh, acceleration voltage uh, we can vary with 0.5 volt to kilo volt to 30 uh, 0.5 kilovolt to 30 kilo sorry 30 volt uh, sorry uh, uh, 0 0.5 to 0.5 kilovolt to 30 kilovolt okay uh, so uh, for uh, basic samples like metallic samples uh, we'll go up to 25 volt or uh, 25 kilovolt or uh, 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 25 or 30 but uh, for other uh, uh, for other uh, bi biological sample or uh, polymer sample, we we'll go. We'll not, we are not going beyond 5 kV. So it will damage your sample. If you uh, if you put more acceleration voltage, it, it may damage your sample. We won't get good images. That's why uh, it all depends upon your sample. If you are working with biological sample, we polymer sample, polymer nanocomposite sample, we won't go beyond 10 kV. It all depends upon the uh, technical staff as well as the instrument. A uh, lot of factors are there. It all depends uh, on uh, the sample. And the next point is working distance. Working distance means the, the distance between uh, sample and the first lens. That is very important. Working distance is also very important. And next point is magnification. How much magnification you require? So, uh, so uh, for uh, if you want to see very small nanoparticles, we we should go uh, one lakh magnification, one point five lakh magnification in that range. But you just need an overall idea of the surface, uh, then uh, uh, even five uh, x or ten uh, x, five thousand uh, magnification or ten thousand magnification is more than enough. And next, the point is image capture. Then we are capturing the image. So that uh, that part will be uh, done by the technical staff. Okay.
So what is the effect of acceleration voltage over your sample? If you increase the acceleration voltage, definitely you will get good images, good resolution, but it all depends upon your sample. If you have some uh, very uh, biological samples or polymer samples which will be affected by the acceleration voltage, then you should not go beyond 10 kV. So beyond even 5 kV is fine uh, for biological sample. Polymer sample, we can go up to, after the sputtering, we can go up to 10 kV and all. Beyond that, it won't be good and it, it will affect your uh, surface morphology. Something else you will get. Uh, that, is the, that is a very important point. And here, uh, the, the slide show lower acceleration voltage and higher acceleration voltage. So if it is uh, the lower acceleration voltage, uh, it will be going like this and higher acceleration voltage it will go more, more penetrate and uh, higher actually here also is the second case is with high atomic number the penetration will be uh, less because higher atomic number means more number of electrons will be there and here also more uh, less number of electrons so it can easily penetrate it won't penetrate much that is a that is a uh, the, that's the differentiation between uh, lower acceleration voltage and higher acceleration here also you can see with lower acceleration voltage how how the uh, uh, image looks like and higher acceleration voltage how the image is, looks like okay next point is working distance as i pointed out the working distance is also very important for our instrument the working distance uh, uh, can vary up to 40 mm working distance between the distance between the lens and the uh, sample so uh, so what is what is important in working distance that is a good question so when you are going with 3 mm the image will be looking like this you can't able to see the uh, perfect uh, uh, perfect morphology of that needle but here you can able to see the morphology of uh, that particular sample here uh, you, you can able to see uh, the 12 mm uh, 12 mm of the working distance you can able to see very clear uh, needle needle like of morphology here it is somewhat blurred now that is the difference these all will be adjusted by the uh, technical staff but still you have to know how uh, how the image is capturing then uh, next point is stigmation stigmation means uh, you know about astigmatism uh, it's 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 a uh, it's a problem with the lens uh, it can be adjusted by, adjusted by the technical staff by adjusting the current so uh, it will be when you are starting with a sample preparation and we will be analyzing you should know with the mode and the acceleration voltage then the working distance then you have to adjust the lenses then uh, the important point is imaging so uh, with an experienced uh, technical staff it is very easy to take uh, a, a, a very nice images so you can see the under focus images and just focus images and over focus images. We have to capture just focus images, focused images we have to capture. So we have to adjust with the uh, brightness and uh, uh, so brightness and contrast. So whenever we are going for good publication, uh, these, these points are very important. Uh, your sample, your image should be uh, uh, with optimum brightness and optimum uh, contrast and uh, should have good focus also. Uh, it all depends upon the uh, sample and technical staff who is doing and uh, as well as it, it will depends upon the instrument also and uh, so what all samples uh, i'm just coming to nanocomposite and all uh, so before that uh, what all samples we can do we can we can analyze that is uh, uh, that's very important so uh, first of all i will be starting with some interesting biological sample you can able to see uh, this is an ant an image of ant even we can see by naked eye and even we can see in optical micro still for interest for identifying the exact features of it uh, ants uh, mouth uh, everywhere uh, some some special features are there for identifying that we will be going with this electron microscope so whenever you are seeing a microscopic image you should understand what all these values are that is very important without a scale bar an image is a waste uh, nothing uh, nothing can be uh, uh, nothing can be uh, studied with an Im uh, with image without a scale bar. So it's image a scale bar is very important. For our software, uh, the value is something like this. From here to here, uh, from first line to this line, this value will be there. When you are changing the magnification, so I will tell you what is this. This is the this is the SU6600 means the model number of the instrument. 1 kV means how much acceleration voltage we are applying. 
this is a biological sample only one kv is applied for metallic samples we will be applying 20 kv 25 kv for good clear images for, but biological sample if you apply more acceleration voltage it will damage your sample and 9.4 mm means the working distance between sample and the gun uh, sorry sample and the lens and uh, this also should be optimum and this is known as magnification 70x only 70x is applied if you want to uh, uh, more magnified image uh, more magnified image you can go up to uh, further magnification sc means secondary electron imaging i already discussed about sc bsc etc so when you are changing the magnification this value will change and you will get more focused the more uh, more magnified image and this is uh, this is very interesting image uh, this is uh, our uh, lizard foot uh, you can understand uh, what is lizard and all this is lizard food we will be applying only 1 kv and 200x only the magnification you can see the scale bar also so this is these are now some nano brushes uh, nano brushes and all uh, so uh, with this only with this only it can able to climb over the wall uh, that is a very interesting uh, thing about uh, lizard and another interesting point is uh, even you can uh, go with the butterflies uh, so in nature itself uh, uh, in nature itself we can see beautiful structures whenever you are seeing this butterfly you can't able to identify uh, uh, identify this much complex the structure is you can see uh, due, due to these structures only we can able to get these uh, colors that's the important point is some in some uh, butterflies only uh, for others it is not like this uh, for some butterflies due to this structure only it can able to get the color so uh, for uh, uh, you can see uh, this is in 130x when you are increasing to 600 as you will be like this and when you are increasing to 5k some ordered structures will be uh, coming here it is more more magnification and you can see the ordered structure when it is changing uh, when uh, the order structure is changing the color will change so uh, it, it it all depends upon these nano structures so uh, i think uh, you you all are uh, mainly interested in your all are uh, mechanical engineers uh, as well as aerospace uh, aerospace uh, aspect uh, when you are discussing uh, we'll uh, go further with metallic samples so uh, so we have some weld joints and all and even you can see the coating surface coating thickness and all you can uh, see and crack uh, cracks you can identify what all cracks will be there and what type of uh, grains will be present those kind of things can be identified with uh, uh, our scanning electron microscope and uh, these are some nanoparticles whenever you are going with some uh, nano composite nanoparticle preparation and characterization is very important so, uh, so if you want to see small nanoparticles you should go for uh, uh, very good uh, field emission scanning electron microscope here you can see a uh, zinc oxide nanoparticle structure this is in 6000 times magnified you can see the particle size even you can uh, identify the particle size here you can see the scale it is 500 nanometer only so each one will be each distance will be 50 nanometer you can see the uh, uh, the values also uh, and here uh, it's a beautiful uh, beautiful uh, structure uh, structure uh, just like our uh, just like a uh, uh, this uh, you can uh, you can understand I, I think you can understand the structure of this uh, uh, this uh, nano nano uh, material and when you are magnifying much more 150 k 1000 uh, so sorry one lakh fifty thousand you can see the scale bar 300 nanometer so each one will be 30 nanometer you can uh, you can able to achieve uh, a resolution of very small around 30 nanometer and old and uh, here uh, another image very beautiful image very beautiful image uh, uh, of uh, of nano material but here you can understand the uh, importance of this acceleration voltage here we have applied 50 k so because this is a nanoparticle uh, this is a platinum based uh, palladium based nanoparticle that's why you can able to apply more acceleration voltage uh, here also we apply 10 k we only we applied so it all depends upon the how much clarity you required how uh, clear your image those kind of things uh, will be uh, will be addressed here and uh, this is also a very good image in 25k and this is a magnified image of uh, uh, one lakh magnification image 
here uh, comes the polymers and polymer nanocomposite uh, usually uh, polymer materials are uh, observed with uh, gold coating only because uh, usually polymer materials won't conduct so if you are coming with a, a film or a composite a plate or whatever it may be uh, i hope uh, you have been uh, you, you have uh, you have a very good class on uh, fiber reinforced uh, composites so fiber reinforced composite also we will be doing with the uh, 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 sputter coating gold sputter coating only and uh, this is the first one is a porous film the, the last one this one is also a porous film uh, this is uh, this is a uh, piezoelectric film uh, so my own sample as a PVD. here you, you comes the polymer nano composite here you can see the particles the particles are dispersed <clears throat> In the film, and this is a polymer uh, micro particle. This is polymer micro micro particle, and you can able to see the uh, structural variation uh, variation in uh, uh, in samples, and you can easily understand how, how the dispersion is, how the particles is, are dispersed in the surface, etc. Here, uh, these images uh, you may have already uh, uh, seen from Logasani Bani Pragas uh, presentation, but still, uh, I'll, I'll show you something interesting. Uh, this is a fiber, carbon fiber uh, sample. Uh, you can see the fibers, very clear fibers and, and fibers with particles also. If you want to magnify this particular area, you can magnify and see how much uh, interesting uh, a fiber and over the fiber, some particles are attached. Though these kind of things you should understand and uh, uh, you should you should uh, you should when you are writing a paper you should talk about this uh, these particles how they have attached to the fiber and how we will be going with the uh, uh, going with the composite etc uh, th these these interactions are very important in uh, polymer nanocomposite aspects so uh, these are some fibers and fibers are covered with some uh, exfoliated graphene oxide graphene and all so you can see the structure very beautiful structures of graphene and all over the over the fiber these are fibers carbon fiber or glass fibers i don't know which material is this but still uh, so we took it in our our own instrument only we have some carbon fiber carbon fiber over all which we have some uh, graphene or graphene oxide uh, particles uh, these are some nanoparticles uh, titanium oxide nanoparticle over glass uh, carbon fiber and uh, will be uh, if you magnify uh, further uh, you can see the 200 nanometer magnification sorry uh, this size is 200 nanometer this is in uh, 2k so if you magnify it you will get it uh, very beautiful images how it is uh, placed over the uh, over the fiber you can easily understand these kind of things by uh, scanning electron microscope Another important aspect is polymer fibers. Polymer fibers can be analyzed with uh, uh, with our uh, with our uh, electron microscope. Uh, these are some beautiful images of polymer fibers. Uh, these are uh, done by uh, electrospinning method, and uh, you can able to see the magnified image. This is only in 2.5 k, and when you increase the magnification 10 k, you can see the par uh, how how small small is fiber is uh, around 150 nanometer. 100 nanometer range 114 nanometer nanometer and old you can easily understand the uh, structure of nano material and another point uh, i hope you know about lotus leaf and all uh, the hydrophobicity of lotus, lotus leaf is very uh, interesting uh, interesting uh, point to study point of study and you can see the uh, structure of uh, particle structure of uh, structure of this uh, uh, lotus leaf uh, due to the structure only, it can uh, it can act as an hydrophobic surface. Uh, no uh, no wax, nothing. Uh, due to the structure only, it can act as uh, a hydrophobic surface. It, uh, so in, the, uh, in my first slide, I have put this image with scale bar. You can see it's a very beautiful image. Even you can tilt the sample, then you can see uh, something like this. If you are growing some uh, material, for example, if you want to grow CNT, or, or some uh, metallic uh, structure or something like that you can see by tilting by tilting you can easily see the growth uh, you can even uh, people are coming with zinc oxide and all growing over the some uh, 
uh, substrate you can see when you are tilting it you can easily see the uh, uh, growth of uh, growth of uh, that particular material over your substrate these kind of images are very beautiful when one hum will be uh, more uh, magnified you will get it this is in 5k only 5000 times magnified this is actually this this structures over these structures some small small structures will be there uh, these are some mimic the images mimic the images means these uh, lotus leaf uh, a lot of sleeve structure is mimicking over some polymer uh, polymer material and we'll be imaging it so we'll get some beautiful images and these images uh, this uh, these structures will be uh, acting as hydrophobic surface and uh, up to now we we discussed about microscopic techniques now we will be moving a little bit about uh, eds and all energy dispersion this is very important for when you are uh, going with this uh, nano composite in aerospace application and all so what all materials present in your sample that is very important what all elements present in your sample element present in your uh, polymer nano composite whatever you are preparing so uh, I'm, I'm always uh, uh, always pointing on polymer nano composite because a lot of polymer nano composite polymer materials are using in aerospace applications that's why i'm uh, typically pointing out the polymer nano composite polymer etc so uh, so this is a very easy method uh, nothing is there i have already pointed out that uh, we have a blue color detector i have shown in that image that detector is known as eds detector energy dispersive spectroscopy detector that is basically for analyzing the elemental presence of your sample what all elements present in your sample as well as how much dispersive how much uh, the, if you are adding something some nanomaterial into your polymer so it is important that dispersion you have to show the dispersion of that particular uh, nanoparticle in there in in their area of your sample so uh, whenever we are submitting papers uh, in journals they will definitely ask for uh, this eds mapping because uh, dispersion in polymer nanocomb basically in polymer nano nanocomposite eds and mapping is mapping means we can map the particles uh, the presence of uh, nanoparticle in, in in their area of the sample that's what you can see the different colored images uh, in red color you can see the oxygen so this is the basic image basic image and we'll be getting a spectrum like this you can understand zinc is there oxygen is there carbon this is a polymer nanocomposite which uh, which includes uh, one polymer known as pvdf trfe uh, uh, that polymer uh, is having uh, fluorine uh, uh, fluorine is there and carbon is there uh, as well as uh, uh, we have zinc oxide nanoparticle is well dispersed in the uh, in the po uh, polymer it is a fiber uh, material fiber uh, uh, retrospin fiber uh, material in in which uh, polymer is there as well as uh, zinc oxide nanoparticle is uh, dispersed over the, the polymer fiber so uh, this is uh, oxygen presence of oxygen you can able to see uh, the presence of carbon the presence of fluorine as well as presence of zinc you can able to see Okay, so uh, we'll be going to end the scanning electron microscope area. Uh, SEMI is the most widely used. Uh, so uh, I hope uh, you got some idea of uh, scanning electron microscope uh, as well as energy dispersive spectroscopy. The most important point is energy dispersive spectroscopy. It is very, uh, very good and very important tool for analyzing your nanocomposite samples. So the presence of the dispersion uh, to identify the dispersion of your nanoparticle in a polymer material is very important when you're doing a higher level of research. And uh, these are the main points. It is versatile of its various modes of imaging, excellent spatial resolution, and uh, sample preparation condition are very modest and uh, relatively straightforward. I already explained how we'll be preparing the sample and how we'll be analyzing. And this is uh, very highly user friendly and automation is there and biological all all kind of samples uh, even uh, i told uh, in water based samples uh, we'll be dropping it on the carbon tape and uh, and drying it properly and we'll be doing the analysis okay so image resolution can be up to 0.5 nanometer but uh, it is not possible for our our instrument our instrument up to 10 nanometer 15 nanometer is okay uh, and x-ray energy disperses spectroscopy eds we can do uh, det uh, it is used for detecting the elements in the surface and next we were 
Hello. Hello. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I have I have time, right? I can I can take some yeah. more time, right? Yes, yes, you can. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So uh, up to now, we, we discussed about uh, scanning electron microscope. How you will be using scanning electron microscope for uh, uh, the uh, the material analysis that means the nanocomposite nanoparticle analysis now we are going to an another method scanning probe technique uh, this is uh, just like i i hope uh, you know how the blind man uh, reading some uh, reading some uh, letters uh, there is known as uh, brain libby uh, just it, it is just like that uh, so uh, a scanning probe microscope is working like with a hand uh, which is known as uh, a probe uh, very very small uh, small probe will be using and we have a can liver also uh, the basic principle behind this, so uh, this is just for imaging as well as we will get some uh, idea of roughness adhesion those kind of things also we will get it from the afm so scanning electron microscopy we will be using it for just for imaging uh, obviously the eds will give you some elemental uh, idea of uh, your sample but for when you are going with the scanning probe microscopy, you will get some idea about how hard your sample, how rough your sample, how uh, uh, what is the Young's modulus of your sample. Those kind of things in nano level you can identify from scanning probe microscopy. So, uh, so one of the scanning probe microscopy technique is atomic force microscope, and uh, we have an atomic force microscope here. It is Park System XC100 system. And uh, uh, for scanning probe microscope, we will be using uh, so the what is the advantage of uh, uh, scanning probe microscope? That is very important. Uh, we have two to three Armstrong lateral uh, resolution we will get. And here, uh, the interesting point is that in FESCM, scanning electron microscope, we will get uh, 2D images. But here, we can go up to 3D formation. 3D information you, can, you will get. And there is no restriction in uh, vacuum or air, whatever it may be. There is no need of vacuum for AFM, doing AFM, uh, sorry, scanning probe or atomic force microscopy. And uh, uh, conductors, non conductor all type of samples with no need of sputtering, nothing. And operated in air, liquid, and vacuum can measure electrical. The, uh, may, the main advantage of this technique is atomic force microscopy. Uh, this is not just using for imaging only. We can, we can measure some electrical, magnetic, optical, and physical properties. That is the advantage of uh, atomic force microscopy. And another point is that you can do even lithography. I hope you know about lithography. Lithography means stone writing. You can write over on over your some substrate. If it is glass or whatever it may be, some uh, some polymer surface whatever it may be, you can do the writing that is lithography uh, by atomic atomic probe that's what uh, the advantage of uh, atomic force microscopy so you can see the images uh, this is uh, in 1986 it is developed and it is just using for topographical imaging and measuring and manipulating matter in nanometer scale by feeling the surface with mechanical probe like blind man touch as i pointed out uh, a blind man is how a blind man is uh, seeing a surface reading a uh, reading his uh, uh, writings uh, like that a, a probe is uh, just moving on your sample and it is feeling your sample and you can easily identify the topography of your sample that's what uh, that's uh, that's the basic principle uh, of atomic force microscopy so uh, uh, it has a can liver obviously a can liver will be there i will show you the image then you can easily understand we have a can liver we have a can liver and sharp tip over the can liver you can, can you can't be able to see the tip because it is in nanometer range you can see the can liver in optical microscope we will be analyzing with the can liver we can't be able to see the tip with our optical microscope also we will be seeing this can liver and this can liver will be touching over your surface okay touching over your surface and uh, this uh, we have different modes contact mode non contact mode and tapping mode here it was shown as contact mode it is touching the sample and it is analyzing so uh, so you can easily see uh, when a, a laser beam is pointing towards this uh, this can liver when when we are moving either sample or the tip 
it will deflect we have some surface roughness this is in nanometer range even small surface roughness also can be picked by this tip if it is, this picky, picky, uh, tip is moving while tip is moving obviously the cantilever will fluctuate and due to this laser this fluctuation can be identified this laser beam is stretching over this cantilever and this fluctuation will be identified this this position sensitive photo detector uh, uh, by uh, by the uh, by analyzing the uh, fluctuations it uh, the photo detector is converting it as an image and uh, and we will be getting very good images of afm that is the advantage of afm the cantilever is typically uh, so the cantilevers are typically silicon or silicon nitrate uh, 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 material and the, even the tip is also silicon carbide or silicon nitrate and uh, i already mentioned we can other than uh, just microscopic analysis this topographic analysis we will get roughness value of the uh, of the your, of your surface as well as uh, how how hard your sample we have some indentation probes uh, so for different analysis i already pointed out electrical analysis magnetic analysis and uh, some lateral force analysis those kind of things can be done by afm so for each method we will be using different type of tips okay that is the main point in this uh, so for usual uh, contact mode or non contact uh, uh, usually we will be going with the non contact mode uh, for non contact mode uh, we will be using silicon carbide or silicon nitrate tip for contact mode we will be using some other kind of tips for if you want to do some conductive fm conductive fm means we will get some spectroscopy also spectroscopy in the sense current voltage analysis if you want to do some current voltage analysis of your sample you can go for conductive fm then we will change the cantilever and tip so for uh, for that kind of uh, analysis we will be using some conductive tip like prom gold quarter tip or something like that and what is exactly happening here when the tip is brought into proximity of sample surface forces between the tip and sample lead to deflection of the cantilever and def this deflection is identified by the photo detector and it it will be converted into image okay so the force between tip and the sample surface causes the cantilever to bend or deflect as i shown earlier and the detector measures the cantilever reflection as the tip is scanned over the uh, sample and uh, different forces are acting over the tip and it can be uh, usually the van der waal force of attraction i'm not going into further details on this van der waal force and all it, it may be boring for you i i just uh, go with the basic principle and these are some tips uh, afm tips uh, you should uh, tip curvature is uh, less than 10 nanometer you can't able to see the tip but you can able to see the uh, cantilever if you see through optical microscope even with eye it is very difficult to see the cantilever uh, a tip anyhow you can't able to see we are only uh, seeing the cantilever and we are doing the analysis and i already pointed out we have different modes contact mode non contact mode and tapping mode will be available and high resolution will be uh, obviously contact uh, mode will be, give you high resolution but it may damage your sample and uh, uh, it can measure the frictional force and uh, non contact mode lower resolution no damage to sample and tapping mode better resolution minimal damage to the sample so in all these methods can be uh, used for analyzing your uh, nano composite sample whatever sample uh, may be nano particle or nano composite whatever it may be and uh, this so uh, so what is the main advantage of uh, this atomic force microscope is that we can able to get the surface roughness trench depth and line width characterization and uh, uh, in semiconductor industry uh, the afm is a very good uh, very good uh, uh, very good analyzing tool uh, for process development production monitor lithography wafer inspection cleaning and photo mass uh, inspection so these are uh, some uh, model images you can able to see how uh, we will analyze the afm image that is very important you can see here a scale is there this is square of 20 micrometer 20 micrometer the area of your uh, image is 20 micrometer into 20 micrometer you can see this is 3d image you can see the 3d image you can see the scale bar also this is a, a basic zero level and from zero to 200 the color will be varying like this uh, you can able to see some colors here and you can match with this scale 
if it is in white color it is above 200 nanometer height you can see the height of height over here also in 3d imaging it is uh, very advantageous that uh, the uh, you can see directly how much height is there in your sample how much roughness your sample is even uh, the um, uh, the processing software will give, give you the roughness value different kind of roughness value you'll get mean roughness ra value uh, 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 asset value the different kind of roughnesses you will get it from the uh, uh, the processing software itself. That is the 2D image you will get, 3D image you will get, and roughness value, different kind of roughness value also. For a basic non-contact or contact mode when you are doing, you will get the, these three informations. But if you want to do some magnetic force microscopy, magnetic, magnetic analysis of your sample, then you will go for magnetic force microscopy. Just you change the tip, then you can go for magnetic force microscopy. Uh, this is known as MFM. Uh, magnetic samples, uh, your sample should be magnetic as well as our tip should be magnetic. So we will be using some uh, tip like uh, magnetic tips and uh, we will be uh, approaching uh, the tip with your sample. We will be, first of all, we will be doing the uh, just basic topographical analysis and uh, we will be going with a lift mode and in lift mode we will get some magnetic forces. So you can easily understand the magnetic force and we'll be plotting a uh, magnetic force in between distance. Okay. And uh, these, these kind of images you will get, uh, this is the topography, the same sample, the topography is something like this, but the MFM image is something like this. The change, change in magnetic properties, you can see the change in magnetic property in different areas. This is just a topography. Uh, just how the uh, how the sample is looks like, but here you will get the from face image. That is, that means the magnetic force, the magnetic property difference in each area. That's what the importance of this uh, this analysis. I I hope uh, yesterday always maybe explained uh, a little bit about this. Uh, this is a topography, of the same sample, but MFM uh, face image is something like this. You can see the variation in magnetic force over the sample. This is the advantage of this uh, method. And uh, next one is electrostatic force microscopy. Uh, so uh, if you if you have our, your sample is having some electric charge, electric charge over your sample. Uh, so in aerospace uh, application and all, uh, electric charge is uh, very important. So uh, so maybe uh, uh, the electrostatic force microscopy we have to use uh, for analyzing the electric charge over your su uh, surface and EFM can be employed for that. And the first image is uh, just like a uh, topographic image, but if you apply some voltage, uh, so you will get some uh, idea of electric, what all electrical charge present in your sample. So we'll be applying some uh, voltage over here. It, it will be responding like that. And another voltage here, it will be responding like that. From this, you can able to understand how your, uh, how, how your, resp uh, your sample responding to different voltages and the what, all, uh, what, what type of charge is present in your sample, uh, present in your sample surface. Okay. And next point is piezo force microscopy. I hope you know about piezo electricity. Piezo electricity means uh, so when you are applying a force, it will generate some potential voltage. Okay. The reverse way are also uh, uh, possible. When you are applying some voltage, some surface deformation it can be uh, observed. So here uh, in PFM uh, force microscopy, if your sample is piece of uh, piezo electric. Uh, so uh, in various applications, uh, this piece of electric material is uh, now, now using for various applications. Uh, so, so for pressure sensing, for energy harvesting, these kind of things. So even uh, in uh, 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 different uh, kind of uh, methods are there for preparing these kind of kind of composites and all, uh, and uh, different in different various applications will be uh, 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 now in, in the still, still now itself uh, various application is uh, using in various industries. Okay, so uh, here uh, in uh, PFM for piece of force microscopy uh, in AFM itself we can go with the piece of force microscopy. Here uh, we'll be uh, applying a reverse uh, piezoelectric effect. We'll be applying a voltage, and uh, uh, the deformation can be studied with this tip. Obviously, the surface deformation, surface uh, roughness, those kind of things can be studied by the uh, tip. Uh, th th that method uh, we'll be uh, adopting here uh, in the case of piezo force microscopy. 
and uh, i already pointed out current af about current af current about af means uh, your uh, sample is conducting for example your sample is conducting you can go with current af iaf mode conductive af tip we will be using conductive af tip we will be scanning with this conductive af tip over your sample and this is a a first one is topographic image second one is conductive af image your sample is having some conductive areas in between uh, you can see this white colors in this white colors uh, the sample is conductive this white areas the sample is uh, conductive by spots you can see in these areas only the sample is conductive you can easily observe the dispersion of some material how the conductive material is dispersed in your polymer material those kind of studies can be done by current af even uh, even i am not going to spectroscopy even current voltage spectroscopy you can go with this uh, this method you will get current voltage iv graph from the sample and it can be used for uh, various uh, uh, various analysis uh, how uh, how a voltage is uh, voltage is affecting your sample those kind of studies can be done by current af method Uh, here uh, it is this is very interesting uh, a particular point if you want to analyze a particular point iv graph current uh, i have already explained uh, how this particular area point is acting with the uh, a particular bias how the current is producing iv curve we can you can uh, able to uh, predict uh, predict the current uh, current voltage graph by this analysis this is known as current afm i or i afm Uh, uh, usually we will call it as IAF and current AF, etc. And uh, this image is quite interesting. I don't know how much interesting for you, but uh, for a uh, for uh, for a material uh, um, whoever working in material, this image is very interesting because uh, here uh, we have a uh, electron gap. We uh, we have a electron. Gap. I hope you know about CNT. Uh, a CNT one single CNT strand uh, strand is uh, placed in between these electrodes electrodes, and uh, you can able to see how these single CNT is. Uh, you can see the image of that particular single CNT, and the CNT is conductivity also. We can measure by sample bias versus current. Uh, the, the, these are the these are the capability of this mission A from a mission. and uh, as i pointed out we can go for nano lithography also nano lithography means uh, two type of lithography you can even can um, flow uh, flow over the with this tip and uh, it, uh, if it is very soft sample you can flow over the uh, flow over the sample and you can uh, uh, you can produce some deep deep kind of thing and uh, otherwise you can oxidize oxidize your sample you can make some lines or something like that Uh, you can go, uh, but uh, the these uh, for all these analysis, the tip should be different. Uh, if you want to go for a lithographic uh, a lithographic tip, uh, it is uh, really costly. So you should go for a diamond tip and all. And uh, uh, the, the the same thing uh, lithography. And uh, the interesting point for mechanical engineers is that uh, this uh, we can go for a nano indentation uh, with uh, a from also. so uh, here also we will be uh, using a different tip of uh, uh, of a diamond and uh, characterization method for evaluating the mechanical properties uh, we can able to analyze the hardness elasticity uh, etc and uh, usually uh, we will be getting a graph of displacement versus force and uh, 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 we will be uh, we, we can able to measure the hardness young modulus etc from the graph you can see uh, a tip uh, this a tip is known as barkovich uh, indented tip uh, I, i hope you have already know about barkovich tip we will be uh, we will be approaching with this barkovich diamond tip usually you will be using approaching with the di uh, diamond tip and it is indenting inside your sample and you can understand how soft your sample is how hard your sample is what is adhesion force of your sample what is the lift off force your sample is so those kind of analysis you can able to uh, uh, see there's the loading curve and unloading curve will be there from this you can understand uh, actually uh, from this uh, from this graph uh, this this kind of graphs you will get so uh, this is an approach when you are approaching your tip to your sample you will get a uh, signals like this and uh, when you are uh, taking it out you will get a signal like this 
So uh, far from surface, the tip will be like this and attraction to surface, it will be like this and can never bend as a pushed into surface when it is pushing inside and when it is pulled off. So you will get adhesion force, how much adhesion is your assemblies and you will get pull off force, how, how much force is required for pulling off from your assemblies and uh, how much hard your assemblies and how much soft your assembly. So here you can understand uh, jump off contact, adhesion pull off, etc. This is known as snapping force. When you are uh, snapping it, uh, you will get a stamping force and adhesion energy, etc. from your assembly. So from this, uh, you can easily understand how uh, large adhesion is there. Uh, the image, uh, the graph will be something like this, if large adhesion is there. If small adhesion only, the image will be something like this. Image in the sense, the graph will be something like this. And if it is soft sample, there is no, uh, if it is soft, uh, so uh, it's, it will be, the graph will be like this. If it is hard sample, it will, it will be uh, like this. And uh, so, uh, so for if you are uh, uh, going with some nanoparticle to a form, if you are doing some non-contact mode analysis, you can able to understand how much uh, thickness for your nanoparticle, how much size for your nanoparticle. This, this is around two nanometer, five nanometer nanoparticle. You can easily uh, uh, draw the uh, curve, and you can easily understand what is the thickness or what is the size of your nanoparticle. This is a fiber sample. Uh, polymer sample only, as you can easily understand. This is 20 micrometer into 20 micrometer. You can uh, understand the height profile also. And this is also a polymer sample, uh, polymer feeding sample. Uh, you can easily understand the surface morphology of the sample. And uh, uh, this is an another method which will be using by uh, our uh, uh, our group. And uh, we are working. I already told we are working with piezoelectric materials. So piezoelectric means uh, when you are whenever you are giving some uh, voltage, it will uh, it will uh, it will give some uh, surface surface change. Or otherwise, when you are giving surface uh, when you are giving some pressure, it will give you back some voltage or current uh, from the current from your sample. So here uh, we have applied uh, minus five volt and zero volt and plus five volt for different samples. C D E means different samples different polymer nanocomposite samples and it, it is acting uh, acting to that uh, particular voltage. So when you, when you, when you apply it for minus 5 volt to 0 volt, the entire morphology changed and plus 5 volt, the entire morphology changed. Here uh, we are analyzing the degree of uh, uh, dipole. Actually, uh, we are flipping the, uh, we are flipping the uh, dipoles uh, and we are analyzing how a voltage is affecting your uh, sample. How how fast it is affecting those kind of things can be uh, identified from the. Uh, this is a specialized electrostatic. I already discussed about electrostatic force microscopy. This is a specialized electrostatic force microscopy. It is known as DCEFM, uh, direct contact uh, electrostatic force microscopy. And in semiconductor industry, uh, uh, the FM is well known for uh, dopant profile. Dopant profile. What all dopant percent in your what all a dopant percent in your material EFM. I already told EFM will be using for electrostatic analysis. Electro electric charge is present in your sample. You can easily analyze. And uh, if you want to analyze a wafer piece over your wafer, what any dust is there or any particle is there on your wafer, you can easily understand how much size is there and what is what is the material it is not possible with the uh, afm but you can go for scm what what is exactly that material but you can see how much size is there and what type of material is that those kind of things can be identi identified from uh, afm and uh, i hope uh, you know about uh, source drain etc uh, in electronics uh, particular uh, effect uh, uh, field emission field of it is transistor so, so gate source, those kind of things we can easily identify by EFM method. And uh, gate will be having some different uh, dopant, and source will be having different dopant. Those kind of things can be identified. And uh, with this slide, I am stopping my uh, presentation. Uh, uh, I hope uh, you can see on functionalized mica gold colloid is present on the functionalized mica. This can be identified by EFM. I hope uh, you can able to understand something from my presentation. Uh, I, actually, I did not uh, talk about anything about our research. I just uh, gone through with 
some basic microscopy techniques how we are doing some sample analysis how useful for uh, uh, how useful the analysis for your sample uh, uh, so how we will prepare sample those kind of things only i discussed i'm just stopping here i i uh, i'm from nit caligat and uh, this is a very good institute uh, of uh, actually i have Uh, spent here almost uh, 12 years from 2008 onwards. I'm here. I have done my uh, master's degree from here only in MSc Tech Polymer Science and Technology, and I joined for a PhD in uh, Nano Science and Technology Department. Now uh, we have uh, this Nano Science Department is now known as Material Science and Engineering. This department is basically uh, working with material science only. We have two courses. Recently, we started BTech Material Science and Engineering. and it's very good course uh, two years uh, second batch is uh, now second batch is joined uh, if you have uh, any queries you can contact me and we have a microscopy center as i pointed out we have a microscopy center here scanning electron microscope and atomic force microscope uh, we are expecting more instruments in near future uh, xrd raman raman is already uh, installed and uh, more instruments we are expecting and uh, an active uh, research is going on in our department and uh, happy to see you all thank you so much for uh, uh, listening me uh, if you have any questions i'm ready to answer thank, thank you. you very much sir for a wonderful session and it's like a very informative session for us so dear participants uh, this is about today fdp so if you have any queries regarding the topic which we have discussed today so you can ask so if you like uh, i'm going to uh, give the controls to unmute yourself so you can unmute and you can ask it out dear participants thank you for your participation today for the informative session so if you have any doubts if you have any queries you can ask no? if you have any questions you can ask otherwise uh, my mail id is uh, there and you can send me a mail or uh, even you can call me no issues uh, if you have any queries i am ready to answer i am always welcome so so like uh, this is about like uh, i think uh, nobody has doubts so okay, thank you okay. very much sir for your wonderful session it's like a, it's our pleasure to have an a wonderful session with you and thank you very much thank once again and thank dear you. participants i am going to share the feedback i have already shared a feedback link in the chat box so you can go to the you can go through the feedback link and you can give feedback about this today's session okay thank you so much thank you uh, coordinators as well as hod of aerospace department similar university and all other uh, faculty members and non teaching staff as well as the uh, other uh, members of uh, other management staff as well as my dear friend lakshani banif prakash he only uh, introduced uh, me to this institute and uh, thank yes, you so sir. much for your uh, uh, kind words uh, thank you thank you all yes sir thank you very much can i leave now yes sir you can leave sir you can leave okay. thank you i am posting my mail id in uh, chat box if you have any queries you can contact me regarding microscope